Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called First Empires. First Empires is a game from designer Eric B. Vogel. He's done Katara, Don't Turn Your Back, which we both enjoy quite a bit. Published by Sandcastle Games. Plays uh, two to five players. Yes, two to five players, 45 to 60 minutes, ages 10 and up. And effectively what you're doing in this game is you are trying to, well, develop the first empire. But what that really boils down to, yes, there's a paragraph of theme, but I don't really know what the theme is. What that boils down to is rolling some dice to move up some tracks to score points. Seriously, that's what it is. You're rolling dice, you're moving up tracks to score points. But, does that translate to a good game? Let's go down to the table and check it out. All right, so here's a game of First Empires, all set up for two players. So to set up, you're gonna pick the appropriate side of the board, which I've done here. In a two-player game, you have to use orange orange and yellow, which I've done, so then you need this city, and or that country and that country. And then you're gonna give each player the player board. You're gonna put a cube down at the bottom, Take the six city tokens, put one on each of the appropriate spaces, put the other one in your starting region, which I've done. You're also going to put the appropriate number of troops, which is three for yellow, four for orange in their city, or territory or whatever. Uh, give one player randomly the first player tracker and this cool little pillar. You're going to shuffle up your personal deck of cards and flip two. They're supposed to be in your hand, but I just have them face up to make it easier for everybody. And um, get the dice ready. And we're ready to go. All right. Also, let's look at these. All your player components can fit in these really cool boxes, which is amazing. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. The game is really straightforward. What we're trying to do is we're trying to roll dice to advance on tracks to score points. That's the whole entire game. But the way you do that is interesting. You have to have people controlling territories to activate that color of dice. So if I was orange, and I rolled a green die, I could not advance because I don't control a green area. I had to get troops into the green, so then when I roll green, I can advance up on that track. Now, let's talk about the tracks. Yellow tells you how many, or orange tells you how many dice you can use, which is this die face here. So this one, this one moves you up on the dice. Blue gives you rerolls. Purple lets you move. Uh, green, gives you more objective cards. And yellow, wheat, gives you more troops. There's also a black sword, which will help give you addition, uh, an additional troop for a conquest, which we'll get into. All right, so yellow is first. So the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna take two dice, because they have a die value of two, and they're gonna roll. This is their result. They can either stick with that result or they're allowed to have one reroll. They're going to go ahead and reroll right now. And they got this. These are their results. They got a yellow and a purple. Now, if they wanted to, they could discard one of these cards out of the game and make either of these dice a sword. They don't want to do that. They had a sword. They rerolled it. Next thing you do is you're going to move troops. They have a movement allowance of two. So you can move two troops one space. You can move one troop two spaces. If the territory is empty, that's fine. If there's other people there, you get into conquest, and that gets a little trickier. But for right now, we just want to do this. We're going to go purple and orange. So they move two. Now they control those two territories. All right. Then what you're going to do is now you can decide if you want to discard a card again to change any die face to any value that you want. We're pretty happy with what we have here. So we're just going to move up the track. So we move up purple. Now we're able to move three troops and we're going to move up yellow. We're going to get to put two more troops out on the board into territories that we control. So one in our home territory and we'll put one in orange. All right. And that's our turn. That's it. It's the entire turn. And if at any point you complete any of these objectives, just tuck them under your board and you score them immediately. So now it's orange's turn. They're going to roll two. They have a yellow, which they want to keep. They don't want to keep the tacking one yet yellow yeah we'll do two yellows that's fine all right now they can move they have a movement allowance of two 
So they're going to go, they need to get into yellow. So they're going to move both their yellow guys right there. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. All right. Now, same thing. They can discard a card to change the face to anything that they want. They're happy with yellow, so they're not going to do that. So they're going to bump up their yellow track. Two. One, two. Now, a couple things happen here. They get to put out three new troops because they have a total of seven now. So they'll put one, two, three, and they hit that symbol right there, which means they get to put a city down, which is the token at the top of that track. It always stays face down. You don't know what the values of these are. And you need to put that in any territory that you control. So I'm going to put it in yellow right there. All right. And that is their turn. So now we're going on to turn two and yellow is up again. So yellow gets to roll two dice. They have blue and green. Do they want blue? Uh, they'd rather have orange. They're going to re-roll. All right, two greens. That's fine. We'll stick with two greens. Um, they could try to conquer, that, but they have a two, three movement. So let's do this. Let's do one, two, o ocean. To get to the island, it takes two spaces. And then we'll do one up there. So that's three movements. Okay. They can discard a card to change something to anything that they want. and But before they do that, they have five regions. So they score this point. Occupy five regions. So we'll just tuck it under the board like that. And, uh, yeah, I think we're going to discard this out of the game. And they're going to make this one an orange die. And now we're going to move up the track. So we move up on orange. That lets them roll three die. And we move up on green, which will give them another objective card. Occupy three adjacent regions. One, two, three, three adjacent regions. Completed. All right, you can complete objective cards pretty quickly sometimes, but that's just the way it goes. All right, next turn. Yellow still rolling two. Ooh, two orange, yeah, we'll keep that. All right, so. Oh, wait, 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 I was looking at yellow. These are, I'm just kidding, these are both orange. We don't have five regions, or we do have three adjacent regions but we don't have five regions. Sorry, I was looking at yellow. Just kidding. All right, so now yellow's up. Occupy another player starting region, five or more regions with 10 explorers. Yeah, that's not happening right now. Do we wanna move? I don't really have anywhere I wanna move, so I'm good. So I'm gonna move Vance twice on orange. That'll get me into the three die territory. And that's my turn. So then it's orange, orange gets to roll three dice now. Two blue, I'll keep a blue, keep a green. I'd really like an orange and a purple. All right, that's fine. We'll roll with that. So I can try to take over. So let's do some stuff. Let's do, I have two movement. So I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna do one, two. Now I'm doing a conquest. In order to do a conquest, you either need to have the same number of people as the other person and a sword, or you have to put more people in the territory than previously there. So I've done that. Then this player has to retreat to an adjacent territory and they'll come back to their home territory. Now I now control this orange. All right. So I can discard a card if I want to. To I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to move up on the track. So a blue, a green, which gives me a card, and a purple. All right, done, back to this. Uh, we'll do one more round, then I'll talk about in-game scoring. So now yellow is rolling three. Mm. <laughs> okay, I wanna show you this. So we'll keep that, we'll roll these two. That works. All right, so now I get a move. What I wanna do is I wanna take over a city. So I'll show you how that works. So I'm gonna come into here, add my sword, cause you need to have more people than are in there. Yellow, orange has to get booted out. Now, if you get into a city that has an opposing player city token, a territory with a city token, you take it. It's now your points at the end of the game. So don't look at it. Could be one, could be two, could be three. But you're scoring points, which is good. So that die is done. Now, uh, that was one movement. They have two more movement they could do. Yeah, let's do it. We'll go, nope. We're going to keep it like that. All right, and then we're going to move up on yellow, which gives them another troop out on the board. Right there's probably good. And we're gonna do green, which will give them another bonus card. 
have a hand of three cards, including this one. Boom, done. This is now scored. All right, back to orange. Do I get three dice? Oh, and yellow also gets to put a city out because they got their workers up to six, so their fighters up to six. So they'll put it right there. All right, so two yellows and a blue. Do I have a blue territory? Do I care about blue territory? I don't care about any of these. I get two rerolls. I want orange. I'll take purple. I get one more reroll. And the green's fine. All right. So now I can move and conquer and do some stuff if I want to, but I just want to get to a purple. So I'm going to do one, two, and that's it. Two movements of my three movements. Now, I don't want to discard any cards for that to change the die, so I will go up on green which gives me a card. I now occupy five regions, so that one's completed. It just took me a little bit longer than what I was trying to do earlier. So I got a card. I get another city, so I'll put a city out here because I made it to the city marker. And then I get a purple, so now I have four movements. All right, and then we're going to there. So that was half the game. You're going to keep going like that until the end of that round in a two-player game. Then after that, what you're going to do is you're going to score your points. So you're going to take any cities that you have on the board. So yellow has two. Orange has two. Plus any cities that you captured. So yellow has the one captured one. Then you're going to score your points. You're going to score your points for where your cubes are on the, on the tracks. So you can see they each have points. The higher you get, the better they are. You're going to score all the points of your cities, which will look like this. So I got eight points, which was really good. I captured the three. And then you're going to score points for the completed objective cards that you've done. So I'll add up all that score, and then whoever has the most points is the winner. There's a couple tiebreakers in the book. I'm not going to go into that, but there are a couple tiebreakers. But if you can't still get a winner, there will be a shared victory after a couple tiebreakers. So keep that in mind. So that is First Empires. Let's go to the top. See what I think about it. All right, well, that was First Empires. So before we get into this any further, let's talk about components. Because these components are amazing. Dual layer player boards to hold the cubes, which is fantastic. I hate moving a cube around on a board that is not dual layered. And the art is phenomenal. Look at this. Phenomenal art. Kind of reminds me of Five Tribes-ish a little bit. Here's the yellow. Here's saw that. Let's check out the blue. Or not five tribes, Yamatai has that kind of feel to it. Um, my, my, one of my favorite things, player boxes that hold all of your bits. I don't want these to fall out, so let's try to make it so they don't fall out. Holds all the bits in there. That is amazing. It's got cards, all the cubes, all the little workers, and the city tokens. Amazing. That right there should be done in every game. Every player should have their own box of stuff. Custom dice that are really nice. You saw those in action on the, the game. This first player marker, which is the pillar, has some heft to it. Man, it's nice. I might use that in Elysium and some other games because that's nice. This board is small, which I appreciate because you don't really need it a ton. But it's colorful and just looks so good on the table. Like I love the art and the brightness and the color of it. The rule book is fantastic. What, what is it? seven pages total? Two of those pages are examples and set up, so it's like three pages of rules. Amazing. Everything about this production is amazing. Now let's talk about gameplay. So as you saw, this is a pretty straightforward roll dice move up tracks game. But while it seems like it's a simple little game, there's also some deep strategy that's going on in there. You gotta make sure that you're moving your people around on the map so you can conquer appropriate territories because you can't just hang out in your own home territory you'll move up on your color track and that's it you got to expand you got to take over places you got to lay down city t tokens because you want to score those points at the end of the game you want to take over other people so you can take their city tokens to score points at the end of the game you're trying to fulfill your con your um, objective cards you're trying to just do all that stuff but really what you're doing is you're moving up on track you're rolling down moving up on a track that's it so the basics of this game is really simple, but the decisions that you can take, the actions that you can do, all that stuff 
makes this game way more than just rolling a die and moving up on a track. Because that would be boring. Hey, I rolled orange, move up on orange. But this, like, i got to go get to an orange space because I rolled three orange dice. So I wasn't going to move this turn. So now i got to abandon my city and get over to this orange space. Hopefully I can get back there before my city is taken over by someone else. Like, just tons of stuff. Like, that whole moving around on the board piece is really, really interesting. And I like that quite a bit. And I love, in case you didn't know that, I love moving up on tracks. Tracks in games is like one of my favorite things of all time. So to have some tracks and some cool dice that I can roll to move up on those tracks and then a little bit of area control up on this board to make it so I can move up on tracks, I like everything about that. So I'm not going to belabor the point. This gets a BGM accepted seal all day. It's going to get a 9 out of 10 on BGG, which is a 4 out of 5 not four out of five, 4.5 out of five wrenches on our arbitrary wrench scale. That means absolutely nothing, but we like to give it the games that we enjoy, and that's what I'm going to do. So that is First Empires from Eric B. Vogel and Sandcastle Games. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and as always, keep gaming. Keep gaming.